you got to innovate. Third must yeah. is you got to innovate. And one of the spaces I would say you need to look, and we're talking again, newfangledish right now, yep. is you need to look at TikTok. Oh, I, thought, I was wondering if you're going to bring this up. You Glenn, need to look are you at ready for this? All right. Okay. Um, Hold on. I'm going to start my dance moves right now. All right. Okay. Get, it, right. get your okay. lips taken yeah. ready to go. Yeah. Hey, happy anniversary. Yes, that's right. This is the one year anniversary of our podcast. I want to just say thank you so much. Like we're climbing up in the ranks. We're getting lots of comments, lots of downloads. And I just want you to know that means the world to me that you will take time on the treadmill, on the train, on a plane, wherever you are, just checking in, whether you're listening or you're watching this on YouTube, just know uh, a big thank you and a request, a request. I know a lot of people. Who would you like to hear? Like, what do you, what do you want from this podcast? Give me more feedback. I'm seeing a lot of people commenting about uh, the enthusiasm around me, just talking about just general business stuff and not just always real estate stuff. People want to hear from new agents that are killing it. They want to hear about teams. But tell me more. Give me comments. Let me know, right? Because I want to keep delivering. So one of the things I get asked about all the time is, hey, Tom, like you, you mentioned at the summit last year, I just got this DM and I talked about it with a client yesterday. You were at the summit last year and you talked about how the, the whole world is shifting. I buyers, right? Uh, convenience sellers, like all these things that are happening, uh, concierge services. Um, and this was stuff that we've been talking about positioning, right? For quite some time. But I made a comment at the summit where I said, I believe there's five superpowers that every agent has to have in the market of the future. Five superpowers, empathy, Sounds strange, but think about it, right? Bringing humanity back to this highly stressful real estate transaction, humanity back to a highly stressful real estate transaction. We could talk for days about it. Negotiation mastery, which is why I brought Chris Voss and others in. Um, obviously, the ability to transfer your skills and to duplicate yourself through software and others. Um, consultations versus just making pitches, but without a shadow of a doubt, and the reason why I got this guy with us today it's about positioning yourself as the agent of trust. Whether you're a loan officer, a CEO of a company, you're running a bank, you're a real estate agent, you're a dry cleaner. At the end of the day, like people do business with people that they know, like, and trust. And, and with this little noisy device and so much changing, certainly with the algorithms the last you know, couple months, um, I thought it'd be important to bring Jason back, talk about his distinctions, talk about what he's talking about at Marketing Edge, and I'm just gonna drill him with a whole bunch of questions. So first of all, Jason Pantana, Thank you, my friend. Pleasure. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, I'm super Bye. excited. I know, man. I, you know, this. I mean, this. This has been one of our most popular episodes, both on the Tom Ferry Show, and it's because because every. Why is it that no one in real estate, or the vast majority of people in real estate, have no clue what they're doing when it comes to marketing? I know that wasn't on my list of questions, but like what, to help me understand. Well, I think you got to go back to why do people get into real estate in the first place? Like we yeah. talk about this at Marketing Edge, foundational, yeah. um, and I say, hey, why do people get licensed? Yeah. And, and I think this is probably any business. Most people, mm -hmm. like my mother-in-law owns a flower shop. Yes. I think, and this isn't any slam against business owners, but no. people go into business to do that business. Yeah. But they keyword, yeah. keyword, do, do that, that business, business, right? They yeah. fail to recognize that, yeah. oh, I got to get customers. I got to get clients. I yeah. got to be able to drive yeah. attention and awareness and all that stuff. And they don't think about those things because why would they think yeah. about those things? I just want to sell more houses. It looks yep. easy. Yeah. I love showing properties. I love working with people. But if you look at every business on the mm -hmm. planet, it has three main departments. Yep. It's got operations, marketing, and sales. Bingo. Every single business. Bingo. And if you don't do marketing, you don't have uh, customers coming in the door. If you don't do sales, you don't convert those leads into opportunities, real customers. Yep. And if your operations are lousy, you're not going to get repeat business. And you're going to eventually drive your business down because you yep. don't get the reputation that the market would ask you to have in order to be successful and bring future business in. So it's operations, it's marketing, it's sales. Um, going back to your question, why do most agents, I think. And I want to be clear, like for all my agent friends right now, there, there are some exceptional people that we work with and there's people that we don't work that are exceptional, but we're talking about 1.4 million people in the U S yeah. the, there's a lot of bad marketing. And in many cases, there's just no marketing well, happening. I, there's a lot of people too. Like I used to see this happen a lot at events. I'd say, how many of you guys do marketing? And I, I wouldn't ask the question like that, but they're like yeah. all the time. I market my listings, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, I do listing and, launches. Yeah. And they could be phenomenal, which that's good. Yes. I'm not important, slamming it. Important. But they stop there and they're like, oh, you mean I have to actually market myself? Well, yeah. How I just want to work referrals. Yeah. Well, well, you don't think your past clients in Sphere are being marketed by $16 billion in ad spend by a bunch of very intelligent people, right? Look, read the Burrell report, yeah. right? I had, a, I had a conversation with a buddy probably a year or so ago. We were talking about it. He, we had a phone call. We were talking about lead generation for agents. Yeah. And I brought up the word lead generation. And he said to me, he was like, 
I only work with referrals. Yeah. And I was like, well, liar. What's it? And I was like, That's what's what a I referral? Said, liar. 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 I said, well, what do you, how do you define a referral? Well, yeah. it's somebody I don't know who was provided to me by people I do know, past yes. clients, fear, yeah. agents, whatever. Yes. And I was like, so I would define a lead as somebody with intent to buy or sell real estate who's given you the permission to contact them. That's yeah. a lead. Yeah. That, that definition certainly applies to referrals. Yes. So referrals are leads, leads are leads. At the end of the day, it's like, you're in business. Mm -hmm. You want to help service the transaction. You, yeah. The product you sell is you. You sell yeah. agency if yeah. you're a real estate agent. Bingo. And at the end of the day, you got to understand what's the product people are buying. What do mm -hmm. they want out of you? What's the, what is it that makes it sticky? What mm -hmm. makes it worth doing? Yeah. That's what they want. And you can call it referrals. You can call it leads. At the end of the day, I call it marketing. Yeah. The job of marketing is ultimately to lead generate and grow your pipeline, period. Yeah. I, I just talk about it. It's like your job is to help people, like find people that you like and they like you and help solve a problem. Buy a house, sell their house. Yeah. Like, but like, I mean, because I, you know, you and I were going to talk about tracking and measuring today. Yeah. And look, I've been doing this for a long time. I, I sat today with a bunch of CEOs and we were reflecting on actually the CEO of this company that I cold called at <laughs> 19 years old. Awesome. That was now 30 years ago. And today's the CEO of the entire home services, you know, in mm -hmm. giant, you know, giant company. And, and we're like, that was marketing back then, right? I mean, maybe not the best form of marketing, but it was marketing. It was. The, the point is, there's just been this massive sort of evolution and shift towards, we all want to say, I only work by referral, right? And I get it. Like, I listen, I want lots of referrals and we get lots of referrals. And the data actually shows, if you really pay attention, A, most people can't actually track, did it was it really a referral? Like, right. where did it really come from, right? Secondarily, you look at like all of the transactions that are being done, Phoenix, Arizona through iBuyer. Well, what happens to those agents? right? And, and Atlanta and Charlotte. Somebody's losing. Somebody's losing business big time because they're not marketing and positioning themselves. We're getting way ahead of ourselves we in this are. conversation, but I don't even care. It's a podcast. That's what we do, right? I, I believe it is a superpower and agents that can position themselves right to become the person of trust, right? To become that person. I keep saying it. I, I want to help people bring humanity back to this crazy industrialized real estate transaction. Yeah. And I want consumers to go, what an experience. And of course I want them to tell everyone they know, screaming from the mountaintops. Because they can't help it. Oh my God, Jason Pantana, Brenda Hernandez, the most extreme, like I, like I want that. And I understand you gotta do both. To build a real scalable business, you gotta do both. 100%. So, all right, let's actually go into the questions, shall we? Shall we? Shall we, in the middle of our rant. By the we way, you're looking very uh, snappy. Thank you. I have to say, congrats. And we just saw the white like the white kicks he's got here. You'd be like really impressed. Thank Clearly, you. he's a marketing guy. <laughs> Clearly. Um, so we're three years into Marketing Edge. Yep. The first two years have been absolute bananas, right? Selling out every single time. Congratulations. Uh, once again, all businesses, what do you do? You find a problem and you solve oh. it in an elegant way and... There we are, right? Yep. So here we are going into the next evolution. And, and I watched as the last couple of events, um, the feedback, what you were saying, what people were doing. And, and you, I think you finally synthesized, right, the five most important things. So I thought for, you know, for our listeners today, especially some of them that know you, like you, love you, right, you know, follow you, talk to us about, like, what is that step-by-step -step game plan? Absolutely. That, that it, maybe the person who's watching right now is in Alaska or in Nova Scotia or, in, you, know, we're, you know, people are listening all over the world to this podcast. Yep. They're not going to be able to go to the event, but let's give it to them. Let's give them the event on this podcast. Done. Let's do what it. are the steps? All right. So Marketing Edge, it's a two-day seminar, but it's five steps. Mm -hmm. Step one, it's super simple. You define your sources of business. Yeah. And at the event, we've got a worksheet where we have like mm -hmm. 86 different sources of business. Yes. So, so we're you gonna have go, some options. So we're going to go through it yes. and we're going to like star the ones you want. Mm -hmm. And I've got fund. I'm going to call it a source bundle, like my past clients and center of influence yeah. are bundled. Yeah. We're going to go through where do you want to get business from? Good. It's going to be a combination of people you know and people you don't know. Mm -hmm. But that's the first thing is like, what's the target? Yeah. Where am I getting people yeah, from? Yeah. Where am yeah, I going to yeah. source opportunity? Put my, put my concentration put my yeah. focus, maybe put my dollars or my time or my, right? Definitely. So got so it. So it's to find my sources of business. Good. Step two is position your brand everywhere. Yes. Now this is going to be something newer that we didn't do in, in the mm -hmm. past. We're going to go deeper into what is your brand? Yes. What is your messaging? How do you talk about yourself online, offline? Mm -hmm. What's the problem you solve? What are the results you deliver? Yeah. We're going to break it down deep so that when it comes to Facebook, Instagram, the different platforms, you understand this is who I am in the marketplace. Yeah. It's my superpower. It's how I generate and earn trust. Yeah. 
this is how I position my brand everywhere. Where does everywhere mean? Yeah, it means hold, in front of all the people. I, I want to be clear for my friend watching right now or listening. This is not a sales pitch. This is getting you informed because I'm going to make him break down all of these. Like these are the questions that we're going to go through today. So yep. I just want to just preface for the person that's listening. Like, is, it, is he trying to sell me on going to the event? We have no problem selling out this event. <laughs> that's True. the, we had to add more, right? Like it's, it's a supply and demand issue. Yep. I'm talking to people that maybe can't go or the ones that have gone that I want them to be refreshed. So I'm, I apologize. Yep. Number Thank number you. three. Number three is establish a lead generating funnel. So yes. this is where a lot of agents stop. A lot of agents, uh, they're in social media, they're sending out postcards, they're mm -hmm. doing email marketing, yep. they're doing a lot of activities yep. that are great at creating a buzz, creating awareness, yeah. but they stop short. Yeah. And what we're gonna focus in on establish a lead generating funnel is, hey, here's how you actually ask for someone to say, my name is, my number is, my email is. Bingo. This is how we get leads mm -hmm. so that you can call them. It leads into step four. Mm -hmm. Step four is nurture nurture nudge thank you kind of like duck duck goose yep so oh, once i've got that. all these leads yeah i, I didn't yeah. come up with the duck duck goose yes part. yes nurture nurture nudge uh nurture means i'm going to add value so really yeah. what's going to be the fun hack at marketing edge is we're going to go back to step two and mm -hmm. we're going to recycle all the stuff we did at step two yes. and we're going to put it here into our nurture campaigns and so the game plan is mm -hmm. we're going to create one nurture campaign to rule them all yes all my leads all my referrals everybody into a revolving door of a nurture campaign that goes 24 7 all the time mm -hmm. not set it and forget it but make no. it as automatic as possible yes yes so that you don't fall through the cracks with it ideally uh, with software and a crm that yeah. shows you who's bubbling up who's you know who's really paying attention who's clicking on more things, right? So yeah, so some predictive analytics yep. coming from your yep. like a, a boomtown type of yep. provider, but also yep. we'll talk about social media retargeting. Yes, we're going to talk about email targeting and different yes. factors like that. Yes, so yes, yes. Nurture, nurture, and then the word nudge. Nudge is a manual attempt to book Bingo. an appointment. Bingo. At the end of the day, like there, we have, we call it. I'm going to call it triple A. Yeah. Triple A is attention, appointment, and then it is action. I'm in out of order. Attention, action, appointment. <laughs> <laughs> the action is they begin with an AI all yeah. of a sudden, but that's good. It's, it's the beginning of the year and we're going to launch it this year. We got this. Yes. It'll be ready by next month. Good. Um, but nurture, nurture, nudge. Yeah. Nudge is this idea of, hey, listen, I've got to ask for an appointment. Bingo. And I think we talked about it on a prior podcast, yep. but we talked about the funnel, the mm -hmm. stages, awareness, consideration, decision, top, mm -hmm. middle, bottom of funnel. Yeah. Bofu, we, bofu, tofu. Right? Bofu, yep. yep. All the... And we talked about how that's really just a measure of people's intent. Yep. Their intent is sort of incubating the longer they go, the deeper they get into mm -hmm. the process of buying or selling. Yep. And it's really about meeting them where they are. In fact, the words we use at Marketing Edge are not awareness, consideration, decision. We call it walking, jogging, running. Yeah. And so it's that personification of, hey, where's this person at? So that when I do my nudge, whether it's a text, whether it's a phone call, whatever that it might be, I meet them where they are. Yeah. Because if they're walking and I show up running, it's like they're going to file a restraining order. I'm going to be coming on way too strong. For sure. For sure. And we talked, it's so yeah. funny, like we talked about uh, Patrick Ferry and I did this podcast where yep. we're talking about research buyers. And if you haven't listened to this, you should definitely check it out. Research buyers versus transactional buyers. And the problem is, talking with a very large portal company, not to be named, but you, you know, you could pretty much figure it out. Everything that they talk about is transactional, right? So if you're treating a, a, a research phase buyer or seller, who's just trying to get information like bedrooms, baths, ready to go. Let me show you a pocket listing. Yep. How well does that go? Sign you're, you're, here. A, yeah, you're a turn off, not a turn on. So, right. so you're taking the same exact concept. You're just putting it into the nurture, nurture, nudge. nudge. Yeah, because it. the reality is like steps one through three. By the time yeah. you get the lead, we know that the sales cycle in real estate is about two years. Yeah. So if yep. you're doing your lead generation right, yep. there's going to be this long period between I've got all these leads. And what most agents do is they say the leads are horrible. They're not good leads. Yeah. But it's a failure to recognize where they are in the process. Yep. It, it isn't that they're not that they're bad leads. It's that they're not ready yet. Okay, I'm gonna make a statement. There are no bad leads. Because no. guess what? There are no leads. There are human beings right. that are on the other end of something that reached out, raised their hand. They were looking at cat videos on mm -hmm. Facebook and they were like, Yeah, I'm curious about the value of my home or yeah, and they right. felt like I I almost I'm almost to the point that I hate the word leads. I know we have to say it as a, as a, like, hey, this is a classification of someone that raised their hand and yada, but like, these are human beings that are trying to do a very emotional, stressful transaction. Yep. Let's think about that. Just think about that. All yeah. right, what's yeah. number five? And maybe we call them inquiries. I don't know, yes. I'm with you. Something, just something a something little Something other than, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, like, hi, my name is Tom and I'm a lead. Yes, right. I, like I'd like to be treated as such. Please, yeah. I'm a lead. <laughs> Please pound on me for ten straight weeks. You know, I'm not really interested this. right now, but go ahead. Yeah, 
give me everything I didn't ask for. That'd be wonderful. Mm-hmm. Uh, step five is yes. measure, optimize, and scale up. So we're Ooh, gonna that was focus. a lot. That was a lot there. Slow down. Say it again. Measure, measure comma, optimize, optimize, comma, and scale up. Yes. Uh, so the idea here is really, it's really simple. Yeah. I'm running plays that work. I'm yeah. positioning my brand everywhere in front of the right audiences, yes. the uh, sources yes. that I chose. Yes. I've got funnels in place. That is, I've got different plays I've got in place to generate leads mm-hmm. so that I can nurture folks. I can add value to folks. I can nudge them into an appointment when they're ready for it. Mm-hmm. All through the name, the name of the game is service. I'm trying to meet them. I mean, yes. you can't decide when somebody buys a house. No. no. They decide. Yes. Same with sales. But once you identify what works, what doesn't work, what we're going to do at Marketing Edge is dig into KPIs. So if it's email marketing versus mm-hmm. social media marketing, what are the different numbers? I need to be tracking and measuring yep. so that I can say, hey, that ratio, that didn't work. Or, hey, I spent all that money, didn't get this ROI. Or I did spend this money, got a major ROI. Bingo. Just putting our spotlight on what worked. Yeah. And then making it a dial where yeah. I can turn it up. Bingo. That's the ba- that's the name of the game. Yeah. And then I roll that out as my plan. So at Marketing Edge, the commitment is you're leaving with the plan. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to walk you through what are some case studies from our ecosystem in terms of what our clients are doing. Everybody having, loves this because yep. this is the R and D and the social proof. Yeah. And oh my God, Tim Lacey did this. And you know yeah. what, you know, what's it frost or whatever, uh, you know, did, yeah. Faust, right, did this and yeah. yes, yeah. love it. So we're going to walk through case studies, yeah. but at in, end of day, you're leaving with a marketing plan. That's your marketing plan yeah. for your business based upon your brand, yeah. who you want to serve. Mm-hmm. And it's stock full of plays that work. Yeah. Not dumb ones. You know, I love that. Yep. Plays that work to help you create awareness, generate leads and grow your business. So, so so let's break down um, positioning your brand everywhere because this this really plays into a couple different things because of the world of social and algorithms changing and you know so we're going to get into some of that stuff in case you're wondering so just go there first like get lay lay out the position your your brand everywhere so people that want to take notes and like attack this can do it right now you know I read a stat the other day and it just popped into my head and it said I can't remember the source I'm sorry I'm sorry YouTube Google it (laughs) Google it It said that on average, Mm -hmm. the average consumer, it takes five to seven impressions to remember a brand. Yeah. Five to seven impressions. So when I say position your brand everywhere, A, it needs to be memorable, Mm -hmm. but five to seven times. In other words, I can't be that person who, we were joking about this, like I sent an email last year. Yeah. Well, that's not going to cut it. It didn't work. Yeah. I knocked on a door. I knocked on a door once. Yeah, I did an open house. They didn't use me when they listed. Yeah. It's it's a matter of consistency. It's a matter of repetition, doing it again and again and again. So when we talk about positioning your brand everywhere, it's going to be what are the top four to six channels or plays, whatever Mm -hmm. word you want to use, that I can put into effect and use over and over again. So let's let's talk Google. Let's talk Facebook. Let's talk Instagram. Let's talk TikTok. Let's Let's talk talk email. Let's talk email marketing, which is no one talks. We're going to talk about email marketing, email marketing right now. The most current status spend a dollar on email marketing, make $44, spend a dollar, make $44. Yeah. That's a 4,400% ROI. And I talk to people every day. You, you just commented on it that literally say to me, well, Tom, I sent an email and I got all these unsubscribes. So I just stopped doing it. I'm like, fix your email. Uh, how about like, like <laughs> don't, don't put a bunch of people that don't want to be on your email list inside your email list or get a better email service provider or all of the above or, or have a strategy and a plan. We're going to get to email marketing. I promise. Which can I go there real quick? No position your brand first. I'll come back to email all marketing. Right. Position my brand first. So just what do remind I me of permission marketing on the email. Of course. Piece. Of okay. course. All right. So let's talk and this can be just pick, you know, pick the ones you like best. Yeah. Uh, let's start with the simple proven tried and true ways. Yeah. Shall we? Yep. Send postcards. Now postcards. is it cost prohibitive? Possibly. It is possibly cost prohibitive, Yes. but send postcards. Don't make them lousy. Mm -hmm. Uh, As with all things in content, it needs to be good, adding value, but it needs to help people know that you're there. Um, I think about what Tom Tool, you shared it at Summit, but it's Tom Tool's recipe for postcards. Yes, share the recipe. Yeah, the recipe was he sends the same three postcards again and again and again. So quarterly, right? March is the same. Well, it's it's, January is the same as April, right? Is the same as July, is the same as October, right? So it's the same thing four times, of course. Yeah, he updates it, but you Mm -hmm. get local happenings, Mm -hmm. you get proof of success, and then you get how's the market. That's it. Every year. Do that. Yeah. That's a great way to yeah. position your brand. Right, you can download all of that literally from like tomferry.com summit stuff. Yeah. Right. Now so to who do I do that? I do that to my sources. Yeah. So that's my farm possibly. It's to my past clients, fear of influence database. Mm-hmm. I position my brand everywhere with what? With postcards possibly. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's do number two. Let's talk about, can we combine two together? Sure. Let's talk about the world of social and video Good. together. Good. Shall we? Yep. Um, social media. All the platforms matter. Uh, one of the words and kind of lumping video in there. Yeah. 
something I've been hearing a lot about is the word multicast. Yeah. Uh, my videos can't go one place and expect to live. They got to go all places. Yes. If you look across most every social platform right now, they're all gaining in popularity, mm -hmm. they're gaining in users, and they're being saturated. Yep. Which means your reach is going down. And so you think, well, why should I do this? If yeah. my reach is going down, there's got to be something better, and there's not. Yeah. It is still, in my mind, the mm -hmm. most cost effective and overall effective way to position your brand it's yes. social media um, the challenge with it is is what do i post yeah. that's where a lot of agents struggle and it's where i intend on putting a lot of my focus like today and at marketing edge is talking about what you're supposed to be posting and across which different platforms yeah so so give us some insight give us some direction here yeah so i'm going to teach them that there are six we call it buckets like mm -hmm. bucket listing there are six buckets that i need to create content around uh, the first one is real me. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go through and build out the plan. I need to talk about me. If yeah. I'm just this, oh, he just puts listings up there. This is oh a, God, exactly. a robot. This doesn't yeah. build trust. Yeah. It doesn't work. Yeah, it's a business, but it's yeah. a, but what are people buying? It's the Dolly Parton challenge that was just out a couple <laughs> weeks ago that you show the funny yeah. Tinder version photo of you, exactly. Facebook, Instagram, yeah. LinkedIn, right? Like yep. everyone's laughing. But like if you, if, you saw, if you know, you know, and if you don't, like yeah. wake up. Yeah, but yeah. it's real me, and if you're a team, it's real us. But yes. the point of it is, like, yes. tell the story. What are you yeah. into? Hobbies, That's travel. you and your kids. That's you and your family. It's you and your dog. It's you and your cat. It's you and the things that you like to do when you're not selling houses. Yeah. And some people are like, but Jason, I don't want to show pictures of my kids and stuff on social. Don't. Then don't. Don't. Yeah. You have the call. You have, you can... Gary Vaynerchuk doesn't. No. And then I have, other, I have other friends that say, I have a Visla dog. And every time I post something with a Visla dog and I do the hashtags Visla dogs, I get like a lead. I get an inquiry. I picked up like seven new friends. Like it's bananas, right? So, you know, know niche. yourself. It's, it's, it's a niche, a niche right? Yeah. Exactly. So what's, right. what's number two? Real me is number one. Number two is knowledge broker. You yeah. need to be informing people about what's going on in the marketplace. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to get into video and stuff in a second. I'm just going to go really fast through these. Number three is hyper local. You got to be keeping people yep. kind of apprised of what's going on locally. Be the lifestyle expert, be the amenities expert, be the person who knows your town, the digital mayor. Same kind of a concept yep. there. Yep. Uh, the next one is agent behind the scenes. Uh, this is this could be similar to real me, but it's like, hey, don't be the manicured, everything's perfect, looks great from yeah, Canva yeah, yeah, yeah. kind yeah, of person. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, take yeah. us behind the scenes. Yeah. Do you know, like Taya DiCarlo, she's awesome at this. Yes, she's I agree. in uh, Manhattan Beach. Yep. She's awesome at just living the life day in her shoes yes. as a real estate professional. Yep. Yep. Uh, she'd be a good one to emulate on just agent behind the scenes. What's it like? Let me make it super actionable for you. I taught this uh, the last two days uh, with a bunch of agents all over the world. And I basically said, look, if your ideal schedule is a morning routine that fires you up and then you get to the office at the same time and then you next you look at the hot sheets and you like in your ideal morning routine, it's not bad to go. Hey guys, just came out of the gym, super fired up, wishing you guys a great day, you know, get out there, right? Like if that's your tribe. And yeah. then I said, and then when you go through the hot sheets, wouldn't it be nice to be able to just go, hey guys, I'm just checking out like all the new listings in the market right now. And did you know that just any, did you know yeah. the average days on the market is now down to four seconds that the, you know, we're in Seattle, there's now a 0.0% of inventory. Like, I mean, it's just, just. It's just letting them know you're doing work 100%. to be a professional. So I gave them like five examples of, you know, be before an appointment, after an appointment, hey, I'm working on transactions, hey, I'm working on marketing. And you're just stopping on your Instagram stories, your Facebook stories, or your YouTube stories, and you're showing them behind the scenes. And when I said it, Jason, this is what I, I mean, I literally saw everybody go like this, hold on, oh. click. And they said, I'm just going to put it right in my schedule. Yeah. Right. Easy. So sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Well, I think there are two Behind reasons. Scenes. There are two things that stop people from doing that. Yeah. One is they forget about it. They're really busy and they Bingo. don't do it. Bingo. Which is why you said putting it in your schedule. Bingo. Or setting notifications to go off on yes. your phone. Yes. But the other is a, a lot of people are like, well, isn't that really vain for me to talk about my life like this? And who really cares about all these details? And I'm like, they don't have to follow you. No. Like, they asked to follow you. So are you going to let them or not? Last, sort of the last time I checked, um, real estate agents on television do really well. <laughs> I do. think people are really interested in 17% of the GDP of the U.S. There's a channel out there. What's it called? It's uh, called HGTV. HGTV. And I think uh, Bravo does it a lot too uh, and a whole bunch of other shows. I, I mean, right. so I just listen, by the way, uh, as we talk about this, and there always is someone that'll say to me, you know, I'm just, uh, just like, I, you know, like they don't, they don't say I'm a secret agent, but they just say I'm afraid to put it out there. And my response is like, Say that to your next seller. Hey, so I just want to be clear. Like, I'm kind of afraid to put things out there. Like, what's the seller going to say to you? Well, how are you going to launch my listing? Like, what are you going to do? With open? Timidly. Like, I got very, Mark over here. Timidly. Mark over here, who was like the chief staff writer for Hobbs and Herder forever. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. going old school, right, Mark? I mean, could you imagine saying that to a seller? Like, I'm really not into marketing, right? I'm, I'm not into putting this. modest marketing. <laughs> 
list, list with me. I like to scale it back. Yeah, your most expensive asset. I'm not going to shoot any videos. Matter of fact, no postcards. Nothing yes. for you. Yeah. But that will be full commission. Yeah. <laughs> but if, yes, but I do want a full commission. All right. Yeah. Sorry. We're making fun. All right. You know our hearts what in the right I, place. Number, am I number five? You're on five. Uh, number five is social proof. Okay. Social uh, proof. And I got it. Like, I'll pause here for a second. A lot of agents really struggle with social proof. And yeah. let me define what it is. Yes. Social proof is just listed. Yep. Just, just sold. sold. Thanks Case for studies. 75 folks trusting us yep. to help them buy their house this year. It could be yep. a map with a bunch of pens could showing be where a, all the a, houses a sold. Beautiful bunch of houses, thumbnail yep. photos, lots of different ways to do it. Agents struggle with this because they think it is so self serving. Yeah. But it's really not self serving at all because have you ever really gone through the process to think about what happens? Like, what does it take for me as the party making a referral? Mm -hmm. What does it take for me to have the confidence in you if Bingo. I'm going to refer you to my friend? Because whatever you do mm -hmm. reflects on me. Bingo. And so when I'm trying to basically condition people who are able to refer me, mm -hmm. I've got to make sure that they see me winning. Yes. Because if they don't see success, then I'm asking them to bear the risk and responsibility of, hey, I don't know how this is going to go. Yeah. But if they see proof in the numbers that what I'm doing is working on a regular basis, I'm now putting them in a position to say with confidence, hey, I'm going to refer Tom Ferry because I know that when I do, I'm going to look like a rock star by look, extension. Look what he did last year, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. how about, have you seen, just on a side note, have you seen all these great new commercials, Just Okay? <laughs> Right, like you know, let's yes. say, um, yeah. um, so yeah. here's my taxes, brake pads, yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're just okay, right? Or yeah, so you're the surgeon. They're okay. I, is he pretty good? Yeah, he's okay. okay, right? Like, but but that's what we're talking about. Like, people are afraid to say. <laughs> uh, there's a wonderful old book called Shameless Self Promotion. Yeah, and and I think the the title really was designed to punch people in the face that were afraid of self promotion, yeah. right? Shameless self promotion. I don't want to do that. And then you read the book, and it's like, well, wait a minute. Like, all we want to do is we want to be in the consideration set of more people, starting with the people in your database and your sphere and your farms and everything else. Yeah. If you want to be on the consideration set, you have to remind, how do you think that we will vote for the next president of the United States? One or two, right? All those right. people out there, right? They're going to be like this. Hey, hey, Look hey. Over here, over here. Now you yeah. might say, Tom, that's horrible and I hate politics and I can't believe you're bringing it up. But that's the strategy. But that's politics. And by the way, they do it online, offline, face to face. I mean, they do it everywhere. Like that's the game. And, and look, maybe you don't want to be the mayor of your town, but don't you want to be on the consideration set of more customers. Like everybody's got a friend in real estate. Everybody's got seven friends in real estate, right? I was talking to one of my clients in New York City. She's like, how do I separate? Like all my friends have 15 agents that they know. And then they know like five that are on television. How do I like, you just want to be on the consideration set. Here's right. what you got to do. Just get an interview. Exactly. At the end of the day, you go back to the first question, which is why don't agents do marketing? Yes. And maybe you're in a position where you're like, I'm not comfortable with doing any of that. That is mm -hmm. your choice. Mm -hmm. But you get the consequences one way or another to not yeah. do it. Yeah. Uh, social proof. It's really not about you. It's really about giving people who yeah. are following you yep. a sense of confidence that you are referable. Yeah. Yeah. I saw Ryan, Ryan Sirhan. I think I actually posted this last year. Ryan did something that was great. So big shout out to Ryan. He actually said, here is the list of every agent I did a transaction with last year. And he recognized all the agents. So Clever. he didn't do the houses. He was saying, I'm just so grateful for all of these other brokers, right? In man. And I was like, that is so, any email, social, put, I mean, I was like, Ryan, because you know, he took the same exact thing, but he flipped it on. I just want to thank all these brokers for helping us get the job done. It was yeah. so smart. I I'm going like, to send my referrals to whom? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wait, wait yeah. he works with everybody and everybody loves him and they all worked well together. Like, and I, okay. want, I feel like I'm missing out. I'm going to go into that and get involved in that. And, and what does it apply? Because every address was on there. Yeah. Right. Every address. And it was just, thank 100%. you. Thank you. Thank you for all the brokers we got to work with. Okay. What's the, what's the last, last one? one? Six. Uh, number six is buzzworthy. Okay. So buzzworthy, this is not like, and again, when you're doing your own social media as the agent, you're the painter. So Bingo. imagine you've got the paint tray, you've got red and blue and purple and whatever colors, and you decide what can, what goes on the canvas. Yeah. Uh, social proof, how much you pick. Yep. Knowledge broker, how much you pick. Real me, how much you pick. It's mm -hmm. your prerogative. Yeah. Uh, buzzworthy needs to be probably like the garnish a yeah. little bit. You don't need a lot of this. Yeah. But I think about Tyler Whitman. I think about some of the For videos sure. he's created. For sure. And, and let's be let's be candid. When I when we start showing examples of hey what fits in this category, mm -hmm. what did Tyler do? What did Taya do? What did yeah. other people do? Yeah. Some of them are going to be like oh it's this and this category. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It's just a matter of saying like, hey, take the pulse of my social media. Am I covering my basis? Yes. Or am I a one trick yes. pony doing the same thing yes. every day all the time? Yeah. Uh, so buzzworthy, good example of that is like a fun commercial like like uh, Tyler does. Zachary Faust does a lot of buzzworthy stuff. In fact, no, no, no. He, tell tell us about the guy that we were just looking at his Facebook page who said like yeah, yeah, the exactly. Did you know? No, no, no. The Did you know in my town? 
Oh, oh, Mike Riches. Yes. Yeah, 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 Mike Riches. Okay, okay uh-huh. so now, by the way, Mike Riches' Facebook page is going to blow up. I know, right? Right, but it should blow up because yep. g- give the stats on, on before you tell them what it is, So, because the numbers are going to go skyrocket after this, give the stats of what happened on this particular first and then second video. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and then I'm going to have them share the concept with you guys, and you're all going to say, Mike, thank you. All right, so Mike Riches is an agent, and I'll give credit where the video, so the video concept, yeah. this concept came out of RETV, which yeah. is Tim Macy's Facebook group. Yeah. So Cotton, Tim's one of our coaching yeah. clients, yeah. came out of there. Um, I'll give you the title of it in a second. Yeah. But uh, it's been being ripped off and duplicated all over the country. Of course. And it works every time. Yes. Personally, my coaching clients, I'm from California to Delaware. Yeah. It works every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so listen up, everybody. It continually is a record-breaking, uh, we call it a view magnet mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of video. Uh, so the first video that Mike posted, which it's Rich's residential real estate in Delaware, yeah. Newcastle County. First video had about 30,000 views on his Facebook page, organic. You sure you didn't pay for that? No. Nope. You did say organic pretty quickly. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Organic. And what's, what's crazy about it is it's not like he has a hundred thousand page followers. Yeah. It's, it's just a regular yeah. real estate agent's Facebook page. Yeah. yeah. 30,000. Yeah. He just did the follow up. It's still growing, but it was already yeah, yeah. 10,000. Yeah. Last I looked. Yeah. 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 So he's done it twice. Um, and the concept is called, you know, you're from blank if, and then it goes through like, Say it again. Hey, you know, you're from Corona Del Mar. If, if you know, you're from, you know, whatever Chattanooga yeah, if, if right. Yeah. Or, and, and then, you might even go hyper local inside of Chattanooga. Right. So could. it's right. Not as maybe broad as yeah, you're so like, you I'm can't say, you know, you're from Los Angeles. If you're better off to say, you know, you're from South Pasadena. That's if. Right. Or like East Nashville. If, yeah. Or it's kind of yeah, a little yeah, yeah. thing that's got its own sticky stickiness to exactly. it. Exactly. Uh, and then what he does is he goes through nostalgia. If you remember when this building was really that building. Yeah. If you remember when this was that, if you ever went here and swung that's the ball good. at this, yeah. uh, it just goes through a list. And in fact, I'll go, I'll go deeper. Yeah. It's not just the near from if, mm-hmm. and I'm kind of jumping around. Sure. This is buzzworthy, but it's what we do. Yeah. Um, the whole idea of lists in your videos. Yeah. Another thing our coaching clients are having success with is top 10 lists. Oh, yeah. Um, top 10 local parks in mm-hmm. such and such area. Yep. Top 10 breweries downtown in such yep. and such area. Yep. Top 10 uh, highest price points or best price per square foot in mm-hmm. so and so. Yep. And they just build out Top lists. 10 smallest homes sold in 2019, right? You see, top I 10 just most saw that one. Yeah. Homes sold top 10 in most 20- expensive. Yeah. But mm-hmm. everybody does the most expensive, I think, doing unique, strange ones will become more buzzworthy than oh, yeah. another, you know, who's got the big bucks and yada, yada, oh, yeah. yada. Not saying that's bad, but just another, know, something uh, to think about. There's another video that Tim Macy's doing that I quite like. Yeah. His, it's a series he does called What a Million Gets You in Blank. Oh, I love it. What a Million Gets You in Blank. And by the yeah. way, when you, when you look at this, the headlines up here on their Facebook, yeah. it's their video. And we're not talking about like over the top text. It's just no <laughs> black, what it gets you in million dollars yep. right and then he tours the house yeah and it's basically hgtv yeah because remember yep. people actually like yeah watching real estate and being a part of real estate and it yeah. creates a fear of missing out and oh i want to work with them they look so awesome and it looks fun let's go buy a house shall Bingo. we Bingo. because people want to consideration said right? i just want to be on the because um no sorry you can't work with me you have to talk to someone that knows me likes me and trusts me get referred in that's the only way well and here's the thing I'm, too like I'm if kidding. you look at these six categories <laughs> yeah Knowledge broker, hyper local. There's a yeah. lot of real estate in there, mm-hmm. and we could talk about where are people at as far as intent goes. But as far as all this positioning my brand everywhere, none of this is heavy handed. I'm not trying no. to force you into seeing a house. No. Uh, what is the stat? Every ten years, people buy. Sell yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. Much every 10 now, years? now they're saying ten to fifteen. Ten to fifteen. Ten to fifteen. Yeah. Interesting, but just interesting, right? Yep. And the, the question always goes back to what we talked about two years ago at Summit, which is, what do you do with tremendous certainty once a decade? Right. What do you, I mean? Look at a decade, this wasn't as popular, no. right? Zillow's years 15 in. years old, Realtor's 20 years old, but it still wasn't culturally the thing as it is right. today. So everything has changed. So this whole position yourself everywhere. Yep. Can I, can I ask, what about like the right photo, the right look? Like, you know, you still see some people that like, I, I got a gal who gave me a card the other day and I was like, sweetheart, like, really, really? Like the photo was like 45 years ago. I mean, it was, it, it really was legitimately that bad. And I love her. She's a great client. I'm not going to say her name. That would be rude. I just said, Hey, look, everyone knows what you look like. She's like, I know, but like the, the vanity, right? So, so we want to, we want to make it look too good. Right. And I think that's a mistake. I would agree with you. I so, think so, hence why the agent behind the scenes. And in fact, it sends a signal of distrust. This person is concealing something from me. They're not telling me the truth. Yeah. When what we know based upon every consumer survey on the planet is that transparency and authenticity absolutely matter. Yeah. So like, let's talk for a second about 
uh, social media, business cards, mm-hmm. website, whatever. Yeah, it doesn't please. matter. Um, it needs to be an accurate reflection of who you are. Yeah. People buy you. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be the prettiest thing ever. You mm-hmm. don't have to be the prettiest thing ever. Yeah. It just needs to be you. Um, and I've used this before. I, I ask people kind of like rhetorically, how good does an agent need to be on video in order that it's a viable channel for that agent to even consider being on video? Mm-hmm. And they always guess like not very good or whatever. But the answer is you need to be as good on video or as good on social, mm-hmm. I could say, mm-hmm. as you are in everyday life. If yep. I bumped into you in line at the grocery store, if we're having coffee, if mm-hmm. we're hanging out, yes. that's how good it is because it's worked for you this far. Exactly. So why should social yeah. media be that's some got kind you of business. a- Yeah. Why should it be a fabrication online when people are going to eventually Thank meet you. you? Thank you. So it needs to be an extension of, hey, this is the real me. It's so funny. It's like, it's like everyone knows it's cliche. What you see is what you get, right? When you walk the talk, all those funny little cliche lines, but, but it's, it's just so true. Like today, all this does like social just reveals who you are. Right. Right. And now some people will not make a mockery of it, but they'll try and make themselves, you know, I'm getting on a jet I know. and I'm actually not getting let on the jet. You know what I mean? Let yeah. me carefully choose what yeah. I'm doing let, right let me, now. You know, this moment of this killer insane restaurant, everybody's laughing. I'm like, really? Well, like show me you hung over afterwards on the ground. Earlier. Like, yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, like just keep it real people. Keep it real. Right. Yep. Like everybody, every, everybody knows. All right. You so said postcards, video. video, social. Yeah. You think we covered social video for now? We'll probably circle I think, back. Yeah, we're more. probably going to come back to it. But I want to talk, let's go back to email for a minute. Let's do. This is a, This is like one of the, I mean, I, I'm going to tell you as a company, you know, anyone that follows me knows, right? We send out an email on Tuesday and Thursday. Why? Because it's two of the highest open rates for email. Mm-hmm. And when we look at our email from the standpoint of reach, connection, um, touching people, getting feedback, getting clicks, watching, whatever it is, it is, it's, it's here and then everything else is down here. Yeah. It's, it's so big that we don't even put it in the, like the competition of which, you know, what lead source is doing better because right. email is so good. And yet so many people are missing the mark on email. Like help us. They're like, they're like not, well, some are I was doing say great. Phoning it in, but that doesn't really apply. We're talking about email. Some are doing great. Now I do want, I mean, I, I could literally start rattling off names of people yep. that I think do a phenomenal, like their agents and I open up their email and I'm, Dan Blackwell, CBRE, local apartment selling real estate commercial broker, started about a year ago putting videos into his, and he would do this. Hey guys, Dan Blackwell, coal banker, you know, CBRE, he didn't say coal banker, CBRE. And he's like, hey, today I'm going to show you a six unit property right here in Orange County, Florida. Did you know that this building was built in 1964? And at that time, and then he walks you through the property, whether it's a closed or an open listing. All of a sudden, his notoriety, yeah. he's the only commercial broker doing it. His emails are so good. Now, yes, he's a client. I like him. He, but you know what? I don't have a lot of time, but I make time because I'm interested in what he's offering. Something to think about. Absolutely. Go. So as far as email goes, um, what do we know about email? One, it's yours. If somebody gives you their email address, mm-hmm. and I'm going to underline the gives you their email address. Keyword there, not, yeah, not Spamalina. You, not I bought their email address and therefore I can email them. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go back to 101 yeah. with Seth Godin, yeah. permission-based, permission-based marketing. marketing. Yep. Permission-based marketing, don't spam people. There's actually yeah. uh, an act against doing so. So yes. don't spam people. Yeah. But let's assume that they gave the consent to be emailed mm-hmm. on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. That's like them saying, hey, I am giving you permission to reach out to me in one of my most... Uh, accessible places, which is my inbox, Mm -hmm. right? Whenever you want. Yeah. That's a pretty big statement. Whenever you want. That's permission. Because when I go on Facebook, I'm trusting Facebook to algorithmically show me what it's going to show me based upon what's going to make me happy in that moment. Yeah. If I go on Google, I'm searching it out. Okay. I got to make a comment though. I'm not talking about you put a buyer on the MLS search. Not listing alerts. I'm not talking about listing alerts. I'm talking about email, email marketing like you do social, like you do direct mail, like you make phone calls, like you see a friend at Starbucks. It's that in spend a dollar, make 44, yeah. right? Email is the goal. It's the golden goose that nobody, we're going to talk about it a ton. Well, we could actually break it into two, like Please. we could break it into two sides of email. It could be email that's designed to nurture. Yep. An email that's designed to call to action, nudge, the, right? The, the professor started to take notes here. I like this. this I got to yes. 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 What I got to do. Yes. It's what I got. Got to do what I got to so, do. So give me like three, four things that I should start doing immediately if, I, if I'm if i not consistent with email. Just tell me what to do. Just teach me. What do I do? 
All right, let's start from the very basics. Mm -hmm. You need an email service provider. Mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft Outlook and Gmail are not email service providers. Thank you, thank you. You need a, like a BombBomb, a MailChimp, yep. an Emma, a ConvertKit, yep. a Weber, Drip, yep. OmniSend, SendGrid, <laughs> GetResponse. So, so we have a couple options. SendFox, you got yeah, a lot yeah, yeah. of options out yeah, there, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, you need an email service provider, at least one. Yes. Um, I'll go. So I'll, just to I'll be clear, email service provider is a piece of software that is separate that is just about sending high quality emails and then tracking and measuring the results and the performance so you can make better decisions and send more yeah. and get a better response. Yeah, it's right? a one to many sender. Yeah. So instead of yeah, sending yeah. one email, or yes. I think you can do like 300 in a day with Outlook, yeah. it's it's meant to be a blast. It's yeah. meant to be one to many. So you need yeah. to select an email service provider. Yep. There's a really good chance you already have one. Uh, number two, mm -hmm. if can I, can I bring in another group? Please. So I'm not doing any email and I'm doing email, but I'm not actually doing it. Yeah. Can we bring that one into please, the mix too? Please. Um, I'm not saying that canned content is all bad. There mm -hmm. are some really great companies out there yes, that create amazing I agree. content. I agree. Uh, I would argue that the ones who are best at it are the ones who invite you in on it and say, yeah. hey, we want you to take this and run with it. Yes. Um, I'm actually thinking about keeping current matters. I Those agree. guys do an unbelievable yeah. job of saying our product is best when you add yourself to the product. Yes. It gets you started, but that to me, and yeah. all my clients who use KCM, they get yeah. great results from doing Ready? it. Here's the national, tell them the local. That's right. That's all it is. They give yeah. you all the national stats, now give them the local. That's right. Be the local expert who can talk both, right? Yeah. So, so number one is get an yeah. ESP, email yeah. service provider. Number yeah. two is, if you're doing canned content and you don't even know what people are, like again, these people said, hey yeah, Tom, I'm gonna let you email me whenever mm -hmm. you want. Yeah. Yeah. And then you don't even know what you're sending them. Yeah. I find that to be just a slap in the face. And I find it to be disrespectful. Yeah. I mean, maybe I'm being a little bit bold in, the, in, yeah. in saying that, but it's like, what an unbelievable channel. And again, you live in a world where Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, whatever, the policies change. Yes. The algorithm changes. Yeah. Your reach goes down. You lose the ability to have a way to communicate with your audience, but there's email. It's always there. Always. And I remember like last year, everybody's been talking about Facebook Messenger. Yeah. Um, Chatbots, Facebook Messenger. Just guess who's getting ready to roll out new policies in March? Facebook Messenger. Bye bye. Actually, they're already out. Yeah. They're just going to actually start enforcing them. Yeah. In March, where if somebody opts into one of your messages, mm -hmm. you can't hit them within 24 hours after. Yeah. So it's going to be a big limitation as far as Facebook Messenger goes. But what remains? Email. It's this guy, right? My yeah. phone. I think most of us have it like right at An the email. bottom of our phone, right? In in like a you know thumbs reach because it's that important Call, to text, us. Call, text, email. They remain. That's it. That's Call, text, it. email. Yep. Now, they're all regulated. Uh, yes. TCPA, yep. regulating with phones, voicemails, all that stuff. Yep. You need to know the rules when yep. you're in business, but I look at email as highly effective. Yeah. Uh, next thing I would say about somebody who's not doing email marketing is they need to come up with uh, what's the campaign. I was just going to say, please talk themes, right? Yeah. Just go theme thematic throughout the year, yep. right? And yep. then and then you you Let's put in some real estate stuff. I was thinking, Tom, go Tool. Tom Tool. Tom Tool. Tom Tool. Yep. Three, three postcards a month. What were yep. the three postcards? It was market update, uh, social proof, proof of success. and local happenings. Yep. Those are the three. So yep. what if I did three emails a month, too? Exactly. Exactly. What, local happenings. What if the email and the direct mail look the same. <gasps> what oh my goodness. And then the social that, post looks the same? We call that omni-channel and a yes. stat's popping into my head and it yeah. may be wrong, but I believe the stat says that brands that use the same looking stuff on different channels, we yeah. call this omni-channels, actually get a 23% higher rate of revenue. Yeah. Now, I'm pulling that one way out of memory. Yeah. Somebody needs to Google that so one. So somebody needs to Google yeah, that yeah, one, yeah. but yeah. I think I'm right in saying that. I'm gonna make a statement. I'm waiting. You and I, have such a love affair with marketing. I think sometimes we come across like assholes. Mm. I just want to, I just, yeah. I, no, I just want to, yeah. I just want to apologize. I just, you know, I'm just, I'm sitting here just observing our conversation and just for, if you're listening and watching right now and if we're coming across jerky, I'm sorry, the, the intention is not that it's actually more just, I, I don't know about you, but like my heart goes out to people when they yeah. get it. When, when a Tim Macy goes from not doing video to be, to now having his own like channel on Facebook and everybody, groups, right? Yeah. Like, um, like that, I, I just want to be clear. So if I, if we can, if, if I came across in any way, shape or form, uh, cocky or no, it's, I've made every mistake. I sent 125,000 direct mail postcard or postcard letters, letters, first class stamp. Guess how many sales I made from it? Zero. It's Zero. An, it's quite an ROI. Yeah. So, so like my passion for marketing is I don't want them to make the mistakes. So I just wanted no. to say that. I just, no, did. and I, I, I would echo it and say, 
Every business has ops, marketing, and sales. And yeah. I look at it as my mission to help business owners figure out how am I gonna get a pipeline? Bingo. Because what really makes me angry is when I look at a really quality agent. Yeah. They're phenomenal at taking care of customers yes. and nobody knows who they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're stuck. It frustrates me, but you know what, email, like let's keep things simple. Yeah. Social media, the content creation, there's a lot of there's a lot of steps involved in doing that. Yeah. And it can feel like, oh, another thing I gotta do. Yeah. What a burden of responsibility. But I look at email and I'm thinking to myself, um, open houses where people consented to hear from you. Yes. Spatio or whatever else all you use stuff. where you're yeah. collecting all that data. Yes. All that stuff. What if you two, three, one mm -hmm. time even mm -hmm. a month send out a valuable email? Yeah. I had a conversation this morning with one of my clients on one of our coaching sessions about, hey, you know what you should do? On bomb bomb once remember that video you showed me with Mark, yeah, yeah. the one you yeah. texted me? Yep. I was like, what if you did that? And I'll explain in a second. Yeah. What if you did that for all your leads once a month? Yep. And and what this this inside conversation we're having was is Tom sent me a link to a bomb bomb video of another agent. I think he was in Toronto, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken, who he was just doing an outreach with bomb bomb. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was doing a screen share. So it's his screens. On You're talking the main about the thing. one like starting in, yep. from the world all Google the way Earth, down. And he was so like good. following up so six good. months after they bought their house. Yep. It was super sweet the way yep. he did it. He was yep. very kind about it. Yep. And he was saying he zoomed in with Google Earth all the way down, he's talking about it. He's like little in the corner, his face is a thumbnail yep. in the corner. Yep. And he's talking about their house and you can see it's bigger than the other ones. And he, he really had pride he did. in talking about their home. And then yeah. he switches over to MLS and he says, just wanted to give you a quick little six month update on what's happened in the market yep. since you bought your house. Yep. Um, this isn't the same as your house. This isn't an official CMA. He was just, like, this one's too small, yep. but but I just want to give you the update. Yep. And I was like, so I talked to my client this morning. We sh yeah. I showed him that video. Yeah. And I said, what if we did this, but for all your leads? because he's in a resort-based market. Oh yeah. And he's got all these people who are thinking about buying vacation or moving to his marketplace. Yeah. And I was like, what if once a month, you took it upon yourself to be the guy who keeps them informed so that if they decide to make that plunge and move down there, they're absolutely informed. And who can they thank for that? Yep. It's, yes. it's all you, right? 1,000%. Because you showed up to serve out of the yeah. gate. And if yeah. I can serve you in my marketing, it's like Jay Bear said. Jay Bear yeah. used to say, make marketing so useful, people would pay for it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that is the attitude behind a good marketer because, in fact, it's the attitude behind a good business owner. Yes. A good business owner steps in and says, I'm going to serve people at the highest level. And then when they realize that marketing is just another way to start serving them sooner, that's when everything works. Bingo. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Okay, so email marketing, let's be clear. ESP, second, campaigns, thematic, right? Yep. Whether it's bomb bomb video and or print. And, and I get emails from, like, I'm, um, I'm gonna now space on her name and that is just horrible. Um, but basically, you know what she does? It's, it's, here's five things that are going on in the marketplace. Here's a couple, and I'm actually like drawing it on the actual email that I see. Like, here's what's going on in the marketplace. Yep. Here's some stats Headline. that you should mm -hmm. know about. Like, just kind of like ticker tape stuff, right? Yep. And then here's some things that are happening in the marketplace. I think I just reversed those two. In the area and deals. And then just a thoughtful, like, two paragraph expression of like, what she's sensing and seeing in the market or maybe a recent transaction yeah. that happened. It's just, and it's almost like, it's the same thing. And I remember the origin of it. She's like, you know what I realized? Everybody asked me the same question, how's the market? And she goes, and I know the script, Tom. It depends, you're gonna buy, sell, a message. She's like, I know that yeah. script. She goes, but yeah. they want more than that. Yeah. So she goes, this email, I just, I'm driving around in my car and I just go, oh, that's right. And then later, two paragraphs, very simple. Basic CTA, nothing crazy, right? It goes out, it gets open, she stays top of mind. It's just one more consideration That's a piece. good productivity hat, by the way, using the voice memos to yes. record it and then- Yes, yes, yes. Because you're usually thinking better when you're doing that. Well, and you're, you're in your car, right? So, yeah. When you shouldn't have your phone, but you all do. All right, <laughs> so let's, uh, let's go back to, um, let's go back since we're only on question two and I think we've been going mm -hmm. for an hour. Uh, we talked about position your brand. Let's let's talk about what are the top three musts every agent should do from an online marketing standpoint in 2020. All right, let's start with the obvious. Number one, must, you must, and again, I don't want to be negative in my, I don't want to talk down yeah. to our viewers, but. Yeah. Do you appreciate when I said that? Like, I did. Because I mean, because you know, we, no, no, it was good. we love this and I like we, we play, we play because we're close and we, you know, so yeah. it could come across cynical and like, that's not the intent, right? No. Just, just thank you. It's passionate. It's passionate. Passionate. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, number one, you must have a recurring video show. Yes. That's number one. I disagree. <laughs> You should have five. That's what I have. Actually, well, yes. funny you say that. Yes. yes. Because I don't want to make people like sweat and stress out. Mm -hmm. But one of the points, uh, Marketing Edge, is make every video a series. Yes. 
And so yes. it's a new little rant I've got. Yes. Um, can we go on like a really quick like little case study sidebar with this? Brother, it's your show. I'm just here to ask okay. questions. People are like, I'm getting whiplash in this conversation. Yes. <laughs> I don't know where you're taking me. Welcome to my head. I live in the yes, state. Yes, exactly. Welcome um, to Marketing Edge. <laughs> so my little boys, they love the YouTubers Dude Perfect. Have you ever oh, seen yeah. Dude Perfect? Yes. Yeah, they yeah, love, yeah. and I, yeah. they're fun to watch. Yeah. Dude Perfect. Yeah. And I think they made like Dude Perfect is one Dude. of the- Perfect. Dude, perfect. Yes, dude they're fun perfect. to watch. Yes. And they have like millions and millions of followers. And I think yes. their ad revenue on YouTube was 20 million last year alone. Yeah. Just yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not something, to mention endorsements from Amazon and Nerf Something to think about. Right? Yeah, it's something yes. to think about. Yes. But if you go to their channel and you surf through their videos, I actually audited them, which yeah. I know that's lame. Yeah. But I did. You're like, yeah, it's lame. You're no, great. I think it's perfect. <laughs> I audited them. They do series. Everything's, mm -hmm. they have a series called Trick Shots. Yep. They have a series called Battles, which you can go look at the channel. Yeah, yeah. They have a series called uh, Stereotypes. And they have another series called, um, I can't, not Siri. <laughs> Siri thinks I'm talking to yes, Siri. Yes, exactly. <laughs> series, yes. just to be clear. Yes. And they have another series, I forget what it is. And I think they're launching a new one this year. Yep. But if you look at it, once a week, they add to each of the series. Now, what, basically they're only posting one video a week. Yeah. Now they're awesome videos, Yes. but it's like one video a week. And so I say every agent should have a video show mm -hmm. or five, Yeah. but what if, or four? So what if I, yes. what if I updated my video show once a month, but I was putting out a video once a week mm -hmm. because I had that many series. <gasps> what yes. if one was top 10 list or, you know, you're from if, or yes. my, Hey, hey drive time with Christoph Chu, like yeah, driving neighborhoods and talking about properties. Yeah. And, and then, hey, it's out and about and around town, right? Yeah. Just shooting videos of you around town. Content is the easiest part. Oh, yeah. Like, let me restate that. There is so much content around you that everyone in your community is interested in. You just got to stop and notice. Yeah. Well, right? Matt Cheney, he's in D.C. Matt Cheney started two shows. Yeah. He, and they do it once a month for yep. both of them. Yep. The one is called On Site with Matt Cheney, yep. where he's kind of a history buff. So he goes yeah. into these old neighborhoods of DC. Oh, I love it. And the whole shtick was, you're going to be like Anthony Bourdain. Just, yeah. It's going to be fun to watch. We're yeah. going to follow you around on camera. And he, it's a beautiful show, three to five minutes. He goes through, he talks about the history of the neighborhood. And then he always has this pivot. Let's talk real estate. And then it goes into the highest price. And it is unbelievable how many people watch that thing. Yeah. Even his own family members are saying, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I got to admit, it's yeah, pretty yeah. awesome. Yep. And then he does another series called Capital Luxury Update with Matt mm -hmm. Cheney. Mm -hmm. And so what he does on this home is he goes into luxury listings and he talks about trends. So he's touring homes. He's mm -hmm. talking about trends in the marketplace. And again- It sounds like an HGTV show totally. or Bravo. Totally. Yeah. But here's what's awesome. We talked about like, what are the biggest benefits? A year in, two years ago, you mm -hmm. said I couldn't have done that. I wouldn't have been able to operationalize it. Yeah. Here we've done it. A yep. year in, what are the biggest benefits? Yep. And do you know what he said? He said, man, when I do my hour of power and I call my sphere of influence, they always take my calls. Oh, yeah. They yeah, were yeah, like, yeah. I, see your, I see you everywhere. Oh, and that, do you guys hear that? I see you everywhere. That's that the magic the word. Position your brand everywhere. everywhere. You know, who, you know who kills it too? And a good one for all of you guys to check out on Instagram is Carrie White. She does. Right? Carrie, Carrie White TV. does such Carrie TV, yep. right? And she's, she's so warm. She's so bubbly. And, and you know, like the first thing she launched with was like, Hey, I'm going to talk to you about the 15 lessons I learned selling real estate for the last 15 years. And she's like, first of all, hello, I've been selling real estate. She was so, re I had a plate at the summit last year. I'm like, yeah. this is so good. And here's the thing I want you to get before you say, oh my God, another show. Are you sure? Like, I don't know. You know, what if I only get 65 views? What if I only get 400 views? I want to remind you about how much time it takes to call 55 people, to call 865 people and say, hey, I want to let you know I've been selling real estate for 15 years and here's the most important lesson I learned. That takes yeah. a lot of time to get that number of views, right? So oh. if you get 300, 400, 800, 1,000, 30,000 views, you just touched 30,000 people and you may have been asleep or going to the bathroom or on a know, listing appointment right? or doing any, you're scaling your trust. It's unprecedented. It's scaling trust. It, I mean, if you look at any stats from any, like whether it's Hootsuite or Sprout Social or yeah. later, anybody who's yeah. putting out stats and reports on all platforms, mm -hmm. video is dominating. Yes. It's, it's almost the same principle as social proof. Yes. Like social proof is really not about me. No. It's really about giving people enough confidence in yes. me that they feel confident working with 100%. me. 100%. I would argue video is really not about me either. No. It's really about being vulnerable enough to put myself out there yeah. so that people can 
watch me, get to know me, and kind of try me on and see if they like me before they choose to work with me. Yes. So it's really not about you. It's yeah. really about other people. I would say number one of the three musts mm -hmm. is you've got to step up to the plate with video. Yeah. It's it's not innovative. It's expected at this point in time, and yeah. it dominates on every platform. Um, I was thinking about this is silly, but I was thinking about it this morning. Have you ever heard the old saying? Um, anything that not really that old in the last ten years. Anything that can be automated will be automated. Yes. It's a tech saying. Yes. I was like, anything that can be video will be video. Yes. It's just the nature of it. Yes. Yes. Because it will. Hashtag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hashtag, hashtag. That that is a long hashtag, <laughs> a long but hashtag. <laughs> but I want it anyway. All right. Can I get that on a sign someplace? Yes. Anything that will be video anything or that what was can it? be video will, will be, be video. video. Yes, it's yes, true. yes, yes. I think I need a T-shirt that says that. Yeah. That's a really good like idea. That. Let's get that. Yeah. We'll give Jason credit for it. Thanks. We'll give him like two shirts. All right. <laughs> so number one is video. Yeah. Number two of the um, three musts. I need some guidance here. Okay. Should we do like, hey, let's be no brainers about this, mm -hmm. or should we be more newfangled about this? Go newfangled. All right. So. But just define new just define newfangled. I think that may be the first time I've said fresh. that. In, I don't should know, we be since fresh I was like, trends? Okay, fresh trends. Fresh yes, trends. that I understand. Because like I'm going to tell you, like you should be doing open houses. You should be doing emails. Of course, you should of be course, farming. Of course, of course, of course. Like you should be yes. doing that. You should call your database. Yes. You should do. You should be texting oh, people. You should be. Yeah. This one's. Uh, this one would be a good hybrid. Is this newfangled? It's ish newfangled. Newfangled ish. Okay. Newfangled ish. Yes. Hashtag newfangled ish. You know how you coined the term mega open house? Yes. I just think it needs to be a full on mega event strategy. Oh, you like that? Mega event strategy. Mega event strategy. Yes. So it's not even an open house. It could be, it could be an open a house. listing launch. It could be it just could be. bringing all your best people together and doing something educational or oh, fun. Yeah. Uh, the, yes. You know, the FAR group up in yeah, uh, Spokane? Of course. Yes. They did when Killing Star it. Wars launched at the end of 2019. Yes. They had, uh, there was like, there was their first ever yeah. client party. Yeah, yeah. And they sold, they had to go to a, the biggest theater. They sold it out with all their people coming. Okay. It was opening weekend. Yeah. So A, pick the right movie. But then we were talking about it and they were like, well, I was like, the challenge with doing a movie is the lights go out and nobody talks. Yeah, so you're yeah. not going to get the mingle. Yeah. So they did trivia, Star Wars trivia in the beginning, which was awesome. And I had them, we looked on, we looked, found on walmart.com, they have uh, Death Star beach balls. So we got those and they could toss them around the room. <laughs> Love it. And it was like, it was yeah. a photo op for all their people. It for was, sure. That's a mega event. Yes. If you ask See, me. See, I would have literally brought in like a Darth Vader character, like somebody we just in a Darth it. Vader outfit, we, we, it was, take photos like with Santa. Like it's, it's, I wanted photos with my kids with Darth Vader. Like that would have been just, I'm <laughs> a Star Wars Darth fan. Vader's knee. <laughs> I want to go, uh, could, could the Forest please invite me to your next one? We did that as a company for years. So I, yeah. I that the movie theater thing has been around for a long time and yep. everyone that knows knows yeah everybody you, you don't pick the new movie 1917 and show everybody a world war one film like no. that's probably not like, you're you know <laughs> i mean probably not a good idea kid movies Tim Maisie did, really Tim did good. frozen 2 hit frozen 2 hit. you can just go right anything disney right anything pixar just go right on down the line and it's a home run it's a home run yep. yeah so like mega events yep. it could be mega open houses yep. it could be appreciation client parties yep. kind of a thing it could also be, I'm thinking about uh, Eric Eikhoff. He's yeah. uh, owner of Fulton Realty in Minneapolis. Yeah. Uh, we call him Fulton Forums. Fulton he doesn't, Forums. Fulton I was Forums. thinking Fulton Prison, but that's the, no, yeah, sorry. No, different, 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 yes, different yeah, keep thing. going. Uh, he does these weekly, and uh, the way they promote these Folsom. events. I screwed that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I was trying There's to catch. There's an S, yeah, yeah, thank Folsom you. Prison. Yeah. Close enough. Yes. Okay, anyways. Who uh, has more ADD? <laughs> Go. <laughs> well, speaking of. Fulton. <laughs> Okay, Fulton Forums. <laughs> yes, Fulton Forums. So once a week, uh, they do like these networking events. Yes. And I kid you not, they're getting anywhere from 50 to 150 people to show up every week. And what's the point? Like what and are they And they, they talk about investing in real estate a lot. Oh, yeah. They talk about, uh, I've got an Airbnb. But what's crazy is the people who are coming are people who don't own investment properties. Yeah. They're people who just, they're young couples who are like, we want to build wealth with real yeah. estate or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So he's, we've lit, like literally thousands and thousands of leads have been generated because people register. He yep. uses Facebook event pages, sure. ties an event bright link to it. So they have to register to get in. Bingo. So it's, it's a pretty smart little thing, but mega events would be like my hybrid, uh, traditional with new school, newfangled ish. You know, it's interesting. So I was coaching this gal, Christina Martinez, who yeah. I, I want to say she was number one or number two in the world for C21 for a couple years in a row. And just, it's just a beautiful person inside and out. And she says to me one day, look, I, I think my real niche is I, I basically talk to people that own a house with a lot of equity and I tell them they should sell that house, take the money out, buy a duplex or a fourplex, and then go buy a new home that'll have greater appreciation 
historically in our marketplace. And I said, how many times did you do that last year? She's like 30 of the like 150 transactions. I said, what if you did a seminar about that? Oh, wow. And yeah. then you, you had, she said, oh, she said, you know, she's this beautiful, you know, Filipino gown. She says, Tom, like very, very religious and just, you know, just everything is in the right place for her, like yeah. emotionally for people, mm -hmm. right? She's like, I don't care if they do it or don't. She goes, I just, I don't want to find people that like want to sell. I want to just find people that like, this is just a good idea. Like everyone else is trying to find like, you know, listings. Yeah. I'm just helping my clients create wealth. So by the time we finished, right, our, our work together, which was about six years together, she was doing events like at the Fairmont in San Jose in front of yeah. like 900 people. I mean, like this is like a, this is a, this is a Jason Pantana marketing edge, you know, the the big screens and and all it is creative is, artist agency it's, booker, right? right? It's yeah. just and, and it's just she's one after another, and Christina is so bright. She would say, you know, okay, here's Tristan, you know. Uh, uh, he and Stephanie, they bought their first home for me like six years ago and it's appreciated this month, uh, you know, this much. And I called them and I said, you need to sell that property. Listen to me, you were smart enough to buy it and you need to be smart enough to sell it. And then That's they did. Way. And guess what? I got them a duplex and it was an area that they wouldn't want to live in, but it's okay because now they're getting positive cash flow. They're going to make money. They, and I got them a new home and it's appreciating like crazy. And then Tristan and Stephanie would stand up and they would tell the audience that they were nervous and this is how they did it. It was like, it basically was an infomercial. Like that would be the way I would describe it, but not in the, but wait, there's more. If you, act, right. there, there was no like Case CTA study. call now. She just said, so I just wanted you guys to understand this is the process. Here's the opportunities. This is where the duplexes are. This is where the fourplexes are. And then she educated them on the investment side of the business. And literally she would, she would bring people up that were like single moms, right? With three kids yeah. that, you know, this is like, this is the nest egg. And then they sold it bought a newer house, got appreciation, plus got some units. You're, you're talking about truly transforming someone's life. So I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm I didn't mean to, to like, no, I love I'm it. I'm so passionate about what you're saying. Mega events. Same rule though. All the money's in pre at and post, mm -hmm. right? Mega open houses, all the money's in pre, pre. marketing, yep. telling everybody about it, letting getting the people world to come, know, getting people to show up at the event, having a strategy. And then your post in terms of your follow up, follow -up. right? If you don't pre at and post, then it was just an event. Well, and then it goes back to step four, nurture, nurture, nudge. There you go. All these people come to my open house. They're probably 10 to 14 months out from making a decision. Yep. I would naturally assume they're there to buy the house, but they're not. We know no. that. No. Anyways, I digress. Yes. Um, What's number jump. three? Or do you have any other fandangly? Uh, fandangly, that's a good word. Yes, you know. Yes. Newfangled-ish, fandangly. New fan <laughs> Hashtag. Those are hashtags. So can I get fandangly.com? <laughs> somebody could ping Mark Lee right now. I want fandangly.com. It's got to exist. Or at least .io. Absolutely. Yes. All right. <laughs> .tv. So what's another fandangly? Uh, let's do, let's, let's go fandangly on this one. Mm -hmm. um, this one's been around, but it's been tweaked. Yeah. Uh, can we call it, like, you know, like guerrilla tactics from a guerrilla marketing standpoint? Yes, yes. Um, we were texting about this the other day. Uh, I call it guerrilla farming. Yes. Uh, I'm so glad you're going here. Okay, good. Guerrilla good, good, farming. Good. And I'll give you kind of the, the use case for where mm -hmm. this came from. Mm -hmm. um, imagine you're in a marketplace where the farm is dominated by an existing agent. Yeah. And then you break down, what is that agent doing to dominate in the farm right now? And nine times out of 10, the answer is they sell a bunch of houses. So their best marketing is yard signs with yep. sold riders. Mm -hmm. In a farm, there is no better marketing than yard signs with sold riders, mm -hmm. none. Yeah. Um, but then from that point on, what's their only other marketing? Probably postcards. Yeah. Okay. So can I give you an argument too? You want to know what the worst marketing is? What's that? A Yard for sale with, sign with that no sits there sign. forever for six months. It's and a you, have, curve. you have lots of them yeah. in the marketplace. People are like, yeah. wow, I thought uh, Courtney was a good agent. I guess not. Right. There's a tipping point. But when right? they go up and down and they see a lot of them with everything else. Yeah. So, like, well, and I think about even yeah. in my own, I've seen it in my hometown. There are agents where they dominate an area yep. and it's, it's also not just their yard signs, but it's also pointer signs and directional yes. signs for mega yes. open houses yep. where they own the turf. Yeah. But anyways, uh, it's, that's guerrilla farming, guerrilla farming. So they typically beyond that, all they do is postcards yep. usually. So imagine what's the cost of a stamp right now. I think they just raised it this 50, year to 55 cents. 55 cents. cents. Is that, guys, think about that. 55 cost, cents. Yeah, 55 cents. Oh. And maybe you can get it for less for like EDDM, EDDM that yeah. kind of a thing. But still, EDDM, I think is more like. Um, way less. No, I think that every door direct mail. Oh, I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking about, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no editing. I was actually thinking about like electronic dance music when you were saying that. I was like, really? It's You're a really young. popular well, yeah, yeah, Spotify yes, playlist. Yes. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. So, um, all right. So, so okay. direct mail cost of a stamp, 55, 55 cents. cents. So I would encourage you from a gorilla, like, okay, gorilla farming is all right. 
what can I do that would threaten that, that yeah. would be able to kind of step in on that, yep. but cost me way less money so I get way more scale. Yes. And I would give you examples of A, like social media targeting would be yep. one thing. Um, we know that Google ad products, let's talk about Google for a second. Yep. Google ad products can still target down to a one mile radius. Um, Where you Facebook you can't do that with Facebook can't. anymore. Nope. Not unless you already have that data and you can upload it as a customer list, which I'm not going to go there right now. No. Um, but with Google, you can still do that. In fact, you can get down to a one kilometer radius yep. on Google. Yep. Now, Google has multiple ad products. They have their Google search ads, which is what everybody thinks about. Uh, they also have YouTube ads. Mm -hmm. So YouTube is controlled by Google, owned by Google. So all the targeting I get with Google, I get with YouTube as well, which yep. means, and YouTube has two primary ad products. They have what are called their in-stream pre-roll ads, mm -hmm. which are the ones that play and you can either either you can't skip it like it's six seconds and you can't skip it that's called yes. a bumper or it's like 15 seconds and you can skip it after five yep same difference they're in stream video ads and then they have their video discovery ads mm -hmm. those are the ones that show up at the top of the search results in the youtube search platform mm -hmm. um YouTube is the second most popular website on the planet. It's the second most popular search engine on the planet. It's the second most popular website in the US, mm -hmm. second only to Google. Mm -hmm. So here's something to think something about. Something to think about, right? Um, I would tell you like YouTube ads are a way to start, yeah. but then you gotta create the videos potentially. Yeah. Yeah, if you yeah. even want a simpler way than that, I would look at the Google Display Network. Okay, but let's talk videos just for a second, then we'll do Display Network. So like we're talking about like, you know, Hey, have you been looking for real estate? I'm Tom Ferry, right? You got to punch him in the face because you only have I like, five seconds. I like what Sean Ryan did. Sean I was Ryan, thinking about his too, right? Sean he, Ryan, the, the three different, go ahead. He, had, he has six seconds and Sean yeah. Ryan, he's up in uh, Sarnia, Ontario. He goes, I only have six seconds to tell you what your home is worth. So click here. Yeah. And it's funny because yep. it's yes. totally ripped off from which one of the insurance companies or whatever exactly. it is. Exactly. But it's, it's fun, right? Yeah. It's fun. And a lot of people like that's. I would be doing marketing. like I'd be doing like hiring just an okay real estate agent, right? I would play off that because that's such a cultural thing right now. So, yep. all right. Yep. So we know video, we know but video. you want to talk display. Let's talk to the display network. So first of all, if you don't know what it is, um, have you ever surfed Google, the web? Google, Google. Yeah, what you, is the display network? What is the Google Display Network? Yeah. But I'll tell you. You can just keep watching. Don't click off. Keep watching. See, I'm trying to help you out. Good. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. I need help. Uh, me too. I digress. Google Display Google Network. Display Network. <laughs> Uh, when you're surfing around the web and you see like little banner ads, yeah. they might pop up. They're in a yep. lower corner. They're uh, skinny across the top banners. They're tall and skinny. Mm -hmm. Those are all called display ads. Mm -hmm. And they're typically placed there by Google. Google yeah. Display Network has about 2 million websites. They are websites with a lot of traffic. Yep. Um, and those websites with a lot of traffic say, hey, Google, we will sell you shelf space yep. for you to place ads that you sell off to advertisers like us yep. who want to be in front of their audience. And you have lots of different targeting options. You have the same targeting options with Google Display ads as you do with regular Google ads, as you do with YouTube ads. Mm -hmm. A lot of agents are like, oh, you're talking about retargeting. No. 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 You can Big use difference. display ads for retargeting, yep. but that's not what I'm talking about. Um, one of our coaches is doing this right now, David Caldwell. Mm -hmm. David Caldwell is, he has a one mile radius inside of his farm, and he targets people with an interest in real estate. So like realtor.com, zillow.com, whatever, just interest in real estate. He targets them. Uh, he gave me his analytics when I was on the plane yesterday. In the last 30 days, he spent 371 bucks. Mm -hmm. He got 201,000 impressions in his farm. 201,000 impressions. impressions. Okay, that's called getting on the consideration set. Yep, and he got 3,500 link clicks, meaning they clicked yep. the link and went to his website and started yep. surfing around there yep. for 11 cents a click. Now. If you do the math on this, what's an impression? An impression is the number of times the posts, the ads were seen. Mm -hmm. They were seen 201,000 times yeah. in 30 days for 371 bucks. A stamp is 55 cents. Yeah. You know what I mean? So for one stamp, that's 300, it's like 300 people. Yeah. 300 people in my well, farm are seeing me. For for 55 cents, or in this case, it's five clicks. Right, right. right. clicks. Five, mm -hmm. five clicks for 55 cents? All day all long. All day long. How much money can I put at that? That's what I'd be thinking. And then myself. I can retarget those people. It, well, again, because they're on my website, not you know, Realtor, yeah. Zillow, Redfin, etc. Which that's the whole game, right? You're, so here, you're now building that relationship. So the guerrilla farming strategy, in my mind, is mm -hmm. this: you got a farm, you want to take it over, or at least become consider like a consideration, yeah, on a consideration. right? So the game is phase one. I got to get known. Let's yeah. go back to that stat where it takes five to seven times to get known. So I'd be mm -hmm. like on a 30 to 45 day campaign to build massive awareness and buzz as fast as I can. Yep. And I am playing for my first listing. 
Mm -hmm. And then once I get my first listing, I invoke mega event strategy. Yeah. And I bring in a mega open house to try to get more listings. But if you want to win in a farm that's being dominated by another agent, you got to break into two phases. Phase one is get my first listing, not become the dominant agent. Yeah. Because I know I need the listings to become the dominant agent. It's just get the first listing. Yep. And how do I do that? Impression-based marketing. I'm going to gain as much awareness as humanly possible. Yeah. So that'd be my new fangled ish. I like that. Whatever I like word that. Used. Okay, so we talked about the three musts. We got through two. Let's wrap it up with the third must. Okay. First one was you got to have a video show. Yes. Thank you for saying that because it's, you or know, a series. It, series. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Second one is Newfangled, right? Really, we're talking about events. Always well, we at events. Events, right? Being yep. the big one. And then really understanding that, like, display, uh, you know, the display network side of Google. Um, I would also like geofencing I would put inside there as well, which yeah. is similar to what Google's now providing where you can Pretty literally much. just like every device they go to, you're on you're on every possible website you could imagine. Well, that is, that is what this is. Yeah. That's, that's what this is. Yeah. yeah. And some, and are, if, some of the like you're, I'm seeing is geofencing now as yeah. well. So I just want to, you know, and maybe not just website, term. apps too. Thank you. Yeah. Apps too. Uh, can I tell you about the client that sent me my ad on Tinder? It wouldn't be consistent with our conversation <laughs> if you didn't. <laughs> She sends me, she goes, your ads are everywhere. And I'm like, you just sent me something from Tinder. Speaking of, there is actually a thing inside Google oh where you can goodness. control what websites you do show up on. Yes, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, yes, I'm going to have to, can we please talk to somebody, maybe Matt, and help, yeah. help have him edit that. Yeah. Okay, what's number three, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, let's talk about, hmm, I'm Third thinking. Must. Third, Third must. Third must. You got to innovate. Third must yeah. is you got to innovate. And one of the spaces I would say you need to look, and we're talking again, newfangledish right now, yep. is you need to look at TikTok. Oh, I, thought, I was wondering if you're going to bring this up. You need Courtney, to look at you ready TikTok. For this? All right. Okay. Um, Hold on. I'm going to start my dance moves right now. All right. Okay. Get, All right. get your okay. lip syncing yeah. ready to go. Yes. Uh, a lot of people are like, TikTok, are you kidding me? Yeah. You know what? I wish I was sometimes, yeah. but I'm yeah, not yeah, yeah. because the stats are there. Yeah. Yes. Uh, let's talk stats. One, uh, TikTok is not a US based company, they're mm -hmm. Chinese in origin. Mm -hmm. Top three countries are India. India. China, all things US. China, yeah, and US. Yeah, they have 500 million users. Yeah, right now, like, and they did it like on a Thursday. Yeah, that's how fast it's that's grown. that's more users yeah. than LinkedIn, yep. Pinterest, Twitter. It's bigger than all those. Bigger than Snapchat. I know, right? Not I bigger know. than Facebook or Instagram. Yeah, they but do that's that. One in the, the they do that in a day. Yeah, but still, yeah, yeah. it's big. If you're catching my drift. Yeah. Um, the 41 percent of their population of their users are 18 to 24. So yep. it is a young platform. Yep. But I would tell you this: on Instagram, the largest demographic is teenagers. Yeah. So here we and, go. And that seems and, to be working out for us. Yeah, it does. And on Instagram, guess yep. what? Only 11% of Instagram users, right around 11% are US based. Yep. So actually percentage wise. Say that again. So so for all my North American, US and Canada, right? Like only 11%. what percentage of the Instagram users are actually in the US? 11. 11%, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Right, which and we means, feel like everyone we know is there. Which I think it's right around somewhere in the twenty percent mark yeah. is where US is yeah. on all of TikTok. Yeah. Somewhere in that neighborhood, I don't yeah. know exactly what yeah, it yeah. is, but it's more is the yeah. main point. Yeah. And here's one more stat about TikTok: in the past eighteen months, mm -hmm. the adult population of users has increased five point five times over. In totally. the past, so it's definitely trending in. Um, and the biggest thing that's really got me thinking about TikTok is I am seeing agents doing it, and I'm thinking of Zachary Faust. Yeah. Zachary talk, Faust, talk about this. This uh, is so, it's priceless. He's been in TikTok for a year. Yeah. In a year, he got 400,000 followers. Yeah. He didn't, you can't buy him. No. He didn't buy him. No. Um, he's had over 8 million views on his post on TikTok. Yeah. And does it actually have an ROI? It does. Mm -hmm. He did nine international referrals this year. Oh. Now, last I talked to him, there three, like, uh -huh. three were pending. Last yeah. I talked to him, but yeah. six had closed. Yeah. And he got six local deals yeah. off of TikTok. 15 yep. deals. On your first year, and ain't in, bad. And in fairness, you could be on there and then take that content and put it on Facebook, put it on Instagram. Multicast. It, like you, you're, you're, but like the TikTok logo is up there and then they're like, oh, he's on he's something on else. I really, oh, I'm going to check that out too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So I would say if you're going to keep pushing the envelope, if social media marketing is a part of your mix and it should yeah. be, absolutely. I'd be looking at TikTok. Yeah. Can I, okay, so I'm going to throw one, not a fan dangled, but this is, the, this is one of those I'm going to, I'm going to actually. I was hoping for another I, fan dangled. Yeah, now, well, you know, this is actually old school sexy, right? That's okay. how I would call it, old school sexy. Um, hashtag. Hashtag old school sexy. Yes, yes. Now I forgot what I was talking about, Jason. No, I'm Sorry, just kidding. I actually I do didn't remember. A uh, couple years ago, I get a phone call from this guy, and this is one of those, I'm actually, this is, I'm actually upset at myself right now as I say this because mm -hmm. I passed on an investment okay, and I love the company so much now. So I'm just angry thinking about it. So just heads up. The thing that I know is, is agents will always say to me, I get all my business from referrals. Mm. And then 
I break down the transactions with them one at a time and they go, oh, that one I met at an open house. That one I met here. Oh, that one is in my farm. Oh, that one is, but, but it's so easy to say, everything came from referral. Yeah. And I say, there's a company called Call Action, mm. right? Call Action. So big shout out to Jesse. We met at the, the little uh, Andrew Wow restaurant and yeah. you had a beer and we were chit chatting. and he saw about his company, he was a startup. And I was yeah. like, obviously stupid. I'm just heads up, I was stupid. Here's, here's what happens, ready? Call action or check out another. What if I told you it'd be really cool to have a separate number on Instagram, a separate number on Facebook, a separate number on Google, a separate number on your direct mail postcards, a separate number on your website, a separate number every single place that you market so you can look at a dashboard every day and say, my phone calls are coming from TikTok. My phone numbers, like people are calling me and responding from my Facebook, my this. People don't know, so they don't know. See, I think agents do more business on social than they're even aware of. Now, the ones that we talk to that actually track and measure, that are actually doing this, they say, hey man, I did nine I deals off of TikTok, thoughts. right? And oh man, you know, my email marketing, you know, hey, it was like 16% of my transactions last year. But more people don't know. So again, I didn't invest, I am angry. I will tell you right now, call action or another, giving you that way to just say, phone number here, phone number there, phone number here, phone number there, so you absolutely know with certainty what is working and what isn't. I'm telling you, for my friends listening right now, it is a game changer. I don't even know what it costs. I haven't even looked at the site, because I don't, because when I look, I get pissed. Well, and it's like, once you know the knowledge, once you know where things are coming from, Bingo. then I know where to double down. I can't. Bingo. How, this is actually a topic we're gonna get into at Marketing Edge a little bit. Yeah. We're gonna talk about the difference between what are sources, what are channels. Yeah. And I know that's kind of glossary terms, but channels are, these are the ways that I talk to my sources. Yes. Does that yeah. make sense? And so how those I reach lines them. get blurred a yeah. whole lot because is social media a channel or is it a source? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's both. It depends upon how you're using it. Yep. But I think knowing where the business came from is absolutely essential because otherwise you're just kind of guessing and guesswork doesn't really go very far for most people. It's chance. Yep. Yep. Um, I would agree the idea of having a phone number where I got the phone call from, but tracking everything. I mean, I know this sounds really simple, but what I have my clients do is we build spreadsheets yes. where we keep track of all their leads, I know where they came from. Yes. And so we can actually, all the campaigns, what worked, what didn't work. So we can actually look back in 90 days and yep. say, that was a bust. That was awesome. Let's yep. do more of that. Yep. That worked. But if you don't have clean data coming in, you're screwed. Yeah. Track and measure, track and measure, track and measure. Like mm -hmm. that's the whole, I mean, that wasn't that number five, basically, if I go back to my yeah, yeah. original oh, yeah. totally. list, measure, optimize and scale, scale up. up, measure what works, what works, what didn't a B yep. test everything, but are getting a little ahead of myself. Jason, we have covered so much ground. When did we start this? Are we going on an hour and a half? We're an hour and 20. Tr <laughs> Tristan's Sorry. over there falling asleep. Like, come on, man. Like, wake up there, buddy. <laughs> he's like, this is a lot of editing to do. <laughs> he's, a lot. Yeah, yeah he's a <laughs> no editing, no editing, <laughs> straight up. You saw when, uh, when I interviewed Bill Pipes, it was the same exact thing. And I got an interview coming up with Debbie Holloway and it, you know, she's going to say, bless your, record. she's going to say, bless your heart at least 15 times. Right. Um, so no editing. Here's my request. Thank you. One year anniversary. Thank you. Thank right. You. Marketing edge and all of the, the, the pearls of wisdom that you continue to share and, and you, you incubate and synthesize through our entire network. There's a lot of people that are extremely grateful. Um, thank you for sharing this. Give me more comments. Let me know what else you want to hear about. And then I guess my request would be like, and I'll, I'm going to give you one thought on this too. I want to know what's the most important thing you want them to do. Mine is listen to this twice and get through all the silliness and pick two things, just two things you can do in the next 60 to 90 days. Everybody wants more inventory. Maybe it's time for a pre spring market big event for everybody that you know to get in front of them and then maybe talk about the market before you play Star Wars or whatever else is going on. Like I like those big scalable oh, yeah. opportunities because there's a massive, massive shortage and not a lot of people have the answer for it except market more. Yeah. What and what I, I would add this. The one thing you should do if you had to pick anything on this mm -hmm. list is you should start a new video series. Yeah. And that means if you haven't done one, great, you start your first. Good. If you're already doing one, mm -hmm. good, start a new one. Mm -hmm. A new video series. And and I I had this conversation with somebody recently. I talk so much about video. You talk so much about video. Yeah. And it's like, aren't you guys working with mostly real estate agents and real yeah. estate professionals and business owners? Yep. Yeah. But it goes back to the point you made. Like the name of the game is build authenticity and trust. Yes. And I have to look at what are my available tools to do that. Mm -hmm. And video is the most effective tool for doing that. Cost per view, cheap. Yeah. Exposure, high. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a good winner, right? Yeah. So the reason I promote video so much is because it's the most effective channel to be in front of people, to position your brand everywhere, gain trust. Bingo. And if you do that, 
they take your calls. If you do that, they refer you. If this you is do that, the, it works. This is the television now. Yes. This is the television. Mm -hmm. It used to be so expensive to produce what we do now in like seconds. So I love it. That's the, yep. the perfect last point. Yep. All right, my friend. Thank you so much for watching. Give us some comments below. Let us know what else we should do. Have you texted me yet? 949-216-5466. 949 949-216. 216-5466. Text me and do me a favor. Do text me and say, is this really Tom Ferry? Because I'll probably go, yeah, this is really me, which has been super fun and freaking a lot of people out. Yep. So I'm here to help. Let me know. We're out.